Good evening, everyone. My name is Deidreni Baston Morrison. I am a graduate of the Institute for Gender and Development Studies, and I am also a Christian, and I find it a privilege to be able to be part of this discussion tonight because it allows me not only to talk about my professional experience, but also my spiritual experience as a Christian. And I must say that um, it's an honor. Kudos to those that have put this um, panel discussion together, especially um, Kamon Wildman, also my, uh, my fellow peer. I thank you for inviting me to be part of this discussion. Um, I do apologize for not being able to be there in person. However, my information is valid nonetheless. Not because I'm not there in person doesn't mean that information cannot be relayed, especially in the time of technology. All right. So before I even go any further, I want to say that gender-based violence First and foremost, to me, I like the United Nations um, definition, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. I loved their definition of gender-based violence. It's, it's, it, that particular definition is one I've held throughout my learning and my enlightening of the whole gender-based dynamic. And you find persons like Kimmel who talk about poor relationships and gender struggles and so forth. But I do like this particular definition because what it says, it says that gender-based violence referred to harmful acts directed at an individual based on their gender. It is rooted in gender inequality and the abuse of power and harmful norms. So this is the background on which I stand today and on which I have evaluated gender-based violence. So it is the abuse of power basically and harmful norms to me and it is violence targeted at a particular gender harmful acts directed at an individual based on their gender so it is rooted in gender inequality meaning that there are particular roles and different um, norms customs that we follow um, for women and men now, um, I'd like to say, like Paul, women and brethren. However, knowing this platform is not only directed to the church, I'd like to say also, I'd like to say women and brethren just like Paul, but I'd also like to say persons viewing and those in the hearing of my voice. Gender-based violence has been in existence since the Old Testament. It is nothing new. It's not something that is new to the church. And we should not be discussing this as it is as, as if it is something new. This has not been new to the church. It's not a new concept. God didn't just get up and it just happened in the 20th, the 21st century. It has been happening over time. It's been happening before the church. It's been happening at the institution or after it's been happening since the institution of sin. And this, the reason I brought the sin into play is because this particular discussion has been, is treading into spirituality. This discussion of gender-based violence is borderlining spirituality. It is talking about gender-based violence and the church, meaning that it is threading in spiritual grounds. Therefore, we must discuss gender-based violence as a spiritual concept. The fact that the church was invited to the table to talk about gender-based violence, it means that we must be discussing this from a spiritual perspective. The church is a spiritual entity meaning it is the bride of christ which is a spiritual being the bible says god is a spirit and they that worship must be must worship him in spirit and in truth and the bibles also state that the church is the bride of christ waiting to be raptured to be with the groom jesus comparing himself as the groom and the church as the bride many times in the bible and we have to bring the bible into play because this discussion is about the church and therefore, gender-based violence must be discussed here as a spiritual entity. However, hence, sorry, I must say that it has been, gender-based violence has been entrenched ever since sin was instituted. 
So let's go back to the laws for a second. So in the Levitical laws um, given by Moses, we can see where gender-based violence was um, evident. We found that women were being abused by men in even in the Israel of God and laws were given to prevent such such as men raping a damsel, taking a damsel to wife, rape was there, all of these customs, everything that um, we can possibly understood and see now was evident from then. And those persons experience a Levitical law, or should I say Mosaic law, to kind of cushion the blow off gender-based violence but in those days there was a community of persons to institute and to enforce these laws if if you read even in samuel you can see where was it samuel or kings one of those areas you saw where um Am anon or amnon or whatever his name was that was david's son who raped tamar his sister and absalom did vengeance and therefore was punished you see where this has been instituted ever since it's not something that just came about david sent for bathsheba and slept with uriah's wife it's not something that is new to us as a church it's something that we've seen over the years happening over and over nevertheless god has punished these things in different ways moses wrote and gave the law that if a if a man should rape a woman he should pay the bride price and marry to her alleviating or, 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 or alluding to the fact that a, a price must be paid for these kinds of violence against women. There was also violence against men, women committing violence against men. The Bible says that the woman would have, um, in even in the same Leviticus, um, I know these are drastic laws that are written in the Bible where the woman would put her hand in the man's groins and pull him by the groin, um, trying to get him out of her quarrel. The Bible says that woman's hand must be chopped off. So you understand that these things have been before. Violence against the woman and the church is nothing new. It's not a foreign object from us. And therefore, we must look at it in a spiritual perspective. Sin caused gender-based violence and therefore a reuniting with God is what will get rid of it. It cannot be alleviated without Christ, the remedy, and our customs and traditions in the church do allow for some of these things to happen. Um, we have policing of the female body just the same in the church. We have policing of the male body. We have body politics just as if, um, just as the world. The reason behind these things, brethren, is not because they are the church, it's because of the human condition. And therefore, we are not supposed to be blaming the church and, and talking badly about the church. But what we need to be doing is to be focusing more on spirituality, pushing this spirituality and the relationship with Christ that will alleviate all of this the bible says if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away and behold all things are become new and therefore we cannot brethren sit down and discuss gender-based violence as the world does we must look at it from a spiritual perspective therefore our discussions must be from a spiritual perspective i personally i will not join a march per se I will not stand up in a march right now because our march is not putting, we cannot address the spiritual soul with physical objects. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And therefore, we cannot use carnal weapons to fight spiritual battles. And I know I might sound as if I am a clock or somebody that is over spiritual, but I must say this because it is the truth. And this is the only way we will be able to win our battles. The Bible says his truth shall be our shield and our buckler. The way to alleviate gender-based violence in the church, and I hope I do get put on last or so, is through the spiritual contact with Christ. 
when we talk about poor relationships and inequalities, yes, we do understand that these things occur and we cannot discuss the Bible out of it. We cannot discuss laws out of it. We cannot put policies in place to eradicate gender-based violence. These are my views. We cannot eradicate gender-based violence through policies and laws because they're not being enforced anyways. We have a lot of laws on the books that are not being enforced. So they cannot alleviate gender-based violence just as if they cannot alleviate racism from the world because race is not a physical problem. Race is a spiritual problem. Race is not something that you can get up and tell people, no, stop hating black people or stop hating white people. You can, they, Someone can say yes with their mouth, you can pass the law and you can force them into their own place. But people People do have rights and we talk about human rights and if my if I feel you cannot have laws against feelings the Bible says against certain things there is no law there is no law against love against emotions there is no law against emotions so if you cannot tell a man not to hate you can't tell somebody to love there is no law against emotions and therefore laws and policies cannot eradicate gender-based violence Therefore, we must look at gender-based violence from a spiritual perspective. And I'm happy that the church was brought into this, that I get to say this. Because we cannot look at gender-based violence as if, oh, we are going to have the discussion among ourselves. It must, the discussion, or if even if we're going to raise awareness about gender-based violence, it cannot be in a cushioned or a centered background and we expect change. Yes, we can do it one place at a time. But we must be on a particular platform to be able to reach those persons that are perpetrators and not with the victims. Too often we sit down and we discuss these things that it needs to be eradicated with the victims and not with the perpetrators. A lot of times I realize I'm no theorist, but I realize that we tend to be so comfortable talking to those persons who are theorists or those who will theorize, but not those that are affected, not those that are out there experiencing um, the situation. And when we do have focus group, focus groups can be very small and they tend to be very central. And then we use that um, result and we generalize. Everybody's situation is different and we do understand that. So I'm not going to be long. I realize that I'm far over time, but I just want to say that gender-based violence is serious. It is a serious offense, and I'm not saying it should happen. It is something that should be eradicated, but not until. Gender-based violence will never be done until we correct the sin issue, until we correct the heart issue.